It's all about our young people and farmers inside today's Jamaica Magazine offering. I'm Theodore Henry, glad to have you. There's a lot to get to, so let's get to it. I'll have the news for you right after this quick break. Have an illegal gun or know someone who does? The gun amnesty program begins November 5 to 19. Surrender the guns to the nearest police station, the FLA, or a lawyer. Your identity will be protected. The proceeding was brought to you by the Office of the Prime Minister. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, November 8, 2022. The National Council on Drug Abuse, NCDA, will be rolling out a public education program to increase awareness of the prevalence and dangers of substance abuse. The campaign is among other actions to be taken from the outcome of the May 2022 Rapid Situation Assessment on Substance Use and Urgent Issues in Secondary Schools. The study has shown a shift in the consumption habits of teen users to include psychoactive substances such as molly. Research analyst at the NCDA, Uki Atkinson, says a national drug prevalence survey will also be rolled out early next year. We want to be able to look and see what is literally happening across the island in terms of the prevalence and practices and, and patterns of substance use. The last one showed that alcohol, tobacco and cannabis were the main substances being used. Hmm. But now we can look post-COVID, right. what is the circumstance? Because we do know that COVID did have an impact on substance use as well. Ms. Atkinson was speaking on GIS's current affairs program, Get the Facts. She says data from the rapid assessment study has been shared with the ministries of health and education, the National Security Council, faith-based organizations, civil society, and academia. She concludes that the situation requires all partners on board to articulate strategies that will address the emerging trend of substance abuse. Community-based organizations promoting gender equality and general empowerment programs are to benefit from a $4 million Canadian dollar grant. Launched on Friday, the grant is being facilitated under the Gender Equality Programming Initiative of the Canadian High Commission. The initiative aims to improve sexual and reproductive health and human rights among adolescents and vulnerable persons. In welcoming the program, Gender Minister Olivia Grange says the partnership is timely and relevant to the strengthening of gender equality that the High Commission of Canada and Jamaica has been one of our key stakeholders in bringing this to fruition. You have been relentless in your pursuit of equality which ties into Vision 2030 Jamaica and the Sustainable Development Goals, specifically Goal 5, which speaks to gender equality. Among the outcomes for the five-year program are changes in social norms and behaviors and the fostering of attitudes against violence. The Jamaica Defence Force JDF has received the Gender Certification Seal, signalling its commitment to gender equality. Gender Minister Olivia Grange, who presented the seal recently, says this remains a primary focus in all public and private entities in Jamaica. The Bureau of Gender Affairs conducted a three-day gender mainstreaming training session at the JDF in October to educate the soldiers on issues of gender imbalance. Fifteen officers were presented with gender focal point certificates. The government, through me as the minister, was resolute in the fact that the Bureau of Gender Affairs would play its part in promoting gender equality in the workplace. The empowerment of both our women and our men is an integral mandate of the government of Jamaica, a mission which is spearheaded by my ministry, the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. Minister Green says the Bureau has conducted 38 gender mainstreaming sessions since 2021, mainly virtually, which have reached 620 public and private sector workers. More of Jamaica's coastal waters will soon be dedicated to the preservation of the country's fish stock. 
Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, Pernell Charles Jr., made the announcement during a recent ceremony at James Bond Beach in Arakabessa. The event marked the completion of the Arakabessa Marine Trust's reef restoration project. It was funded by a $17,000 U.S. dollar grant from the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Oceans and International Environment and Scientific Affairs. We provided $40 million to our fish sanctuary management partners to continue the need the needed support. We anticipate that in this fiscal year, another 2% of our coastal waters will be designated as fish sanctuaries to bring the total uh, up to 17,000 hectares. Minister Charles Jr. says the reef restoration project is in line with the ministry's biodiversity plans. And finally, Jamaica's National Identification System, NIDS, program has been awarded for the level of deliverables achieved for 2021 by the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB. The project copped the top awards for both Planning Accuracy 2021 and the Best Performing Project Executing Unit 2021 for the implementation of NIDS for economic growth. Program Director of NIDS Dr. Warren Vernon says the recognition is encouraging and a motivation for the team. In the entire country, the entire IDB portfolio of Jamaica, you know, we won the first place award. And uh, the IDB came up with the award to really recognize, you know, project executing units that are delivering. And not only delivering, but, they are, you know, would have overcome several challenges. The NIDS project implementing unit, which is based at the office of the Prime Minister, had to overcome several challenges, such as the 2019 Supreme Court ruling against the former NIDS Act and operating during a pandemic. Dr. Vernon says the team successfully pivoted to lay the groundwork for a new national identification and registration policy and a new legislation that is aligned with the Supreme Court's ruling. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. The power of youth is the commonwealth for the entire world. The faces of young people are the faces of our past, our present, and our future. No segment in the society can match with the power, idealism, enthusiasm, and courage of the young people. November 2022 is being celebrated as National Youth Month, and we encourage you, Jamaica's future leaders, to step into your power. As we celebrate youth, as we celebrate every single one of you, never forget that an education is the best gift you can give yourselves. Never forget that in all things, you must be your biggest cheerleader. You must champion your own cause. Because there will come a time when you might feel that the world has turned its back on you. But most importantly, you must never turn your back on yourselves. You must never stop believing in your power and in the power of youth. Listen, young people, you are the change agents of today and we're looking forward to your robust participation in national discourse and providing your perspectives on policies and initiatives. As a country, we remain committed to ensuring that we have all the policies and programs for your development. We remain committed as a ministry to creating an enabling environment for youth empowerment, personal development, and contribution to the shaping of policies in collaboration with the relevant stakeholders. I wish to assure you, our nation's youth, that there will be a continued focus on placing your views across our various sectors to engage in more meaningful partnerships 
in developing appropriate interventions and services that will impact your lives. We also will continue to place all our students, their mental health, their mental well-being as a priority for the ministry. Encouraging words from two of our ministers of government. They were speaking at the recent launch of National Youth Month. Since then, young people were empowered through a Youth in Business and Entrepreneurship Expo on Saturday, and on Sunday, they were blessed at a church service. Let's see what else is on the 2022 calendar. activities under this year's theme, Reignited, Empowering Youth for Jamaica 60 and Beyond, will no doubt excite you or young people. As well as our Pond, Pond the Ends series, uh, we'll make stops in various locations across the island. I want to encourage you, our young people, to participate in the activities planned for this month. Among these activities are a series of events geared towards making this month pleasant, educational, and empowering for all. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. Original. For several years now, we have been celebrating November as Eat Jamaican Month. It's a government-led initiative to encourage Jamaicans to eat more locally produced food for good health, cost-effectiveness, and national food security. For us to do that, those who grow the food must be empowered and protected. Farmers and fisher folk, are you aware of the AgriCare Insurance Plan in place just for you? Insurance provides protection against unexpected financial loss, ill health, or even death. For too long, Jamaica's farmers and fisher folk have had no such cushion for the storms life sometimes bring. Then in 2021, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries brought plans to life that would set out a safety net for the men and women that feed the nation. All of the things that we're doing, this is one of a group of activities to make sure that Jamaica is prepared in case of disasters, in case of any situation that is coming. So if Jamaica is preparing, the farmers and fishers in Jamaica should also prepare. Partnerships took form with Advantage General Insurance, providing access to insurance coverage for the vessels, vehicles and accessories of farmers and fisher folk. 
with GK Insurance to introduce a parametric rain, drought and wind insurance policy for the sector. And to deliver group life and health insurance for farmers and fisher folk. The AgriCare plan is, uh, was formed out of a, a partnership between Sagicore Life Jamaica and the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. Farmers and fisher folk who are registered with the Rural Agricultural Development Authority RADA or the National Fisheries Authority NFA are empowered to protect themselves through a group major medical plan, a full house plan, a critical illness plan, a personal accident plan or a group life plan. Each person could determine if you know health is more important for them, if life insurance is more important for them, if critically illness is more, is, is more important for them and they make the decision based on affordability. To the farmers and the fishers, um, it is incumbent, it is important, it is your duty to protect yourself and to protect your family. And one of the best ways to do this is to make sure that you get this insurance which is affordable. Just to give you an idea, coverage of 500000 for a critical illness plan is $675 per quarter. Per quarter. So that works out to about $225 per month. So when I talk about affordability, um, you know, Sajikor is, is seeking opportunities for the persons who we know have been underserved for the longest time. So if you get a lump sum of payment and you decide that, okay, you know, maybe I can cover my annual premium, then we encourage them to do so. There is even a special plan designed for fisher folk to cover decompression illness. Which is something that they also call the bends that fishermen suffer from when they do the diving. And so, you know, we know that that would be a benefit to them as well. Something is available for everyone, believe me, in terms of affordability, uh, because based on the plethora of products that are available. With a plan or plans that will work for you, the journey continues with enrollment. Farmers are able to come on March 1 to May 31st of each year without, in, um, without any medical evidence of insurance, and they can also uh, include their families on the plan, so dependent children and spouse can be added to the plan. There are many avenues to enrollment. You can fill out a form at one of the NFA or RAD offices, or head to the nearest Sagicor location and meet with an agent. And if you're technology savvy, they can reach out to Sagicor, um, you know, via the internet. So I mean, you know, via, via Twitter, um, social media pages, you know, Facebook, uh, uh, Instagram. They can do their enrollments electronically and make payments electro electronically on our Sagicor Connect um, portal. Last year we had, I mean, you know, a very good, good take-up that we would consider excellent under group insurance, you know, requirements generally. But we know that we have over 220,000 farmers, over 27,000 fisher folk. So in comparison to what the market size is, I, I would say we are pretty much a drop in the bucket. The message is clear. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Leave a legacy that your family will graciously thank you for. The progression towards a professional, protected farming and fisheries sector continues. We are moving and pressing the discussion forward uh, towards crop insurance, towards pension, and towards a simplifying now of the information. Respect for myself and others. Self-discipline means there's a right way to conflict resolution. Kindness and compassion say being nice is normal. Honesty and integrity are badges of honor. Yes, we choose values for life. There is one more bit of business we need to get done before closing the curtains on this show. It's time to catch up with the Prime Minister's movement for national development in the past week. Prime Minister announces $1.3 billion Christmas mitigation works. 
welcomes 19 new straddle carriers worth 20 million US dollars at the Port of Kingston and delivers the inaugural Edward Philip George Siaga Human Development Lecture. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Vanessa Silvera. It is not just these straddle carriers that we are investing in. There is more to come. The straddle carriers will improve efficiency. Prime Minister Andrew Holness last week as he handed over 19 new straddle carrier vehicles to the Kingston Freeport Terminal Limited KFTL. The vehicles, worth 20 million US dollars, are set to boost the efficiency of operations at the port by improving the loading and unloading of containers. Mr. Holness said government continues to invest in operations at the Port of Kingston to make it the most competitive in the region. So the government, through the PAJ, is looking at other lands in this area that could become available to support the expansion of the port and the expansion of the logistics operations which are associated. The latest acquisition of the 1941-foot freight vehicles brings the number of straddle carriers in the KFTL's fleet to 29. By Tuesday, the Prime Minister was in Parliament announcing a $1.3 billion Christmas mitigation program across all 63 constituencies. Each constituency will now be allocated $21 million to carry out road patching, debushing, drain cleaning and garbage collection activities. The funds are an increase to last year's $16 million allocation. I want every Jamaican to understand and appreciate that this government will place this country will place our economy in a position where we will be able to repair their roads, their bridges, their drains. Mitigation works are usually carried out at the start of the Atlantic hurricane season in June, at the height of the season in August, September, and at the end of the season in November, December. Still in Parliament Tuesday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness disclosed that the damage caused by Tropical Storm Ian now stands at $889 million. Flood damage assessments, as well as detailed designs to undertake repairs to pavement and retaining walls, have also been finalized. The cost to reopen the affected works and improve the drivability of the roadways is estimated at $359 million and the cost to undertake permanent works, primarily retaining walls, drainage structures, and so forth, is estimated at $530 million. The Prime Minister was quick to add that the works will be undertaken on a phased basis due to budgetary constraints. The government is proposing a program of targeted interventions with priority rankings as follows. As I've said already, we're focusing on reopening block roads, which we have essentially achieved. Cleaning of critical drains, which are now heavily silted. Patching of main thoroughfares, which have been scored. And the construction of new structures, retaining walls, river trading, etc., as funds become available. The National Works Agency and the Municipal Corporations are being tasked to oversee the repair works. Clarendon sustained the most damage during the passage of Tropical Storm Ian, with the road repair bill standing at $649.7 million. Other parishes significantly affected include St. Catherine, St. Thomas, St. Elizabeth, Hanover and Trelawney. On Thursday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness reiterated the relevance of the 40-year-old Hart NSDA Trust to Jamaica's development architecture. He reasoned that the institution has been a necessary entity in equipping the island's labor force for the fourth industrial revolution. There is still work to be done by Hart to get into the inner cities, to get into the rural areas, to get those young people, bring them into programs, provide them with stipends, change their mindset and their outlook and bring them 
into the labor force. There is work there for them because the economy is growing. If we don't do it, it will affect our growth. Prime Minister Holness was delivering the Edward Philip George Siaga's inaugural Human Development Lecture at the University of Technology. Hart NSDA Trust was established in 1982 by the late former Prime Minister. Since its inception, the institution has trained more than 613,000 individuals and certified over 250,000 persons. Before that, the Prime Minister was at Jamaica House where he held a farewell reception for the second cohort of the Jamaica House Fellowship Program. Mr. Holness said the program has produced a new caliber of public sector workers who are dynamic, efficient and agile. We need a new breed of technocrat, of civil servant, of public servant who is consummate in complying with the rules and delivering quickly. That is what the country needs. And uh, for us to engender that, we need to create um, a nursery, an oasis, an area where we bring in talent and expose them to the difficulties of government, the difficult choices that are often operating in conflict with each other and you have to resolve them. Mr. Holness urged the Jamaica House Fellows to utilize lessons learned in leading the public sector's reformation. The group of seven young professionals were installed in November 2020 and served in various ministries, departments and agencies for two years. I am absolutely sure that we all would have grown and developed skills which we will utilize as we ascend the rungs of the ladder of success in our respective careers. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. Be sure to join us next time for more of the news stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Until then, I'm Vanessa Silvera. How many more must die because of reckless drivers? How fast is too fast? Make we take time, no man. Obey the rules of the road. Drive with care. Tuesday is one of the more inconspicuous days of the week, isn't it? Still, I hope today's show was clear as day about the value of our young people to our national development and why ensuring our farmers and their assets benefits all of us. Join the JIS team tomorrow for another Jamaica Magazine package. Check out our website, links on the screen, for other great content. I'm Theodore Henry. On behalf of the entire production crew, I wish you a great rest of the week. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.